This conference will now be recorded. Um, so if you were with us the other day, some of this is going to um, be repetitive. Sorry, nature of the beast. Um, but I really, as I said, this is not a typical webinar. This isn't going to be me pushing out a bunch of information to you all. This is really meant to bring you all together to have a conversation and share what you're planning to do for programming, what you have been doing, um, how you're taking sort of some of this programming you've been doing and, and shifting it into the summer reading theme um, in hopes of inspiring each other, um, helping each other problem solve, talking about the challenges you might be having because somebody else might have you know, discovered a miracle, a miracle potion or something. Um, and uh, the other piece, and I'm gonna share the link in, in the chat. Yeah, the cameras come on. As someone who's been working from home for almost a year with like nobody over the age of 18 to keep me company, it's always so good to see faces of grown-ups. Um, I'm going to share in the chat a link to a Google Doc. Um, and you may have to copy and paste it out if it's not clickable. Um, my hope, and I'm doing one of these for every single brainstorming session we have, and so my hope is that um, over the next couple weeks, as you all are sitting in these sessions or people have a chance to go back and watch the recording, that um, people will start putting information in as sort of a living document so that we can all go back and refer back to. For those who've attended our in-person workshops in the past, um, you'll probably remember that one piece of those workshops is being able to get together in small groups and sort of fill out some of these programming, brainstorming worksheets that you walk out with with a program in hand and we can't do that this year um so such such a huge wealth of information that you all have so um before we end i'll sort of go through just a quick run through of the google docs it's pretty self-explanatory but just because it makes sense in my head doesn't mean it makes sense to anybody else um, but with that i'm going to stop babbling and i'm going to open up the floor to you all um, I do want to make sure that we're sort of focusing the, the conversation on, you know, that preteen age and teens um, today. We've, we've done children's and we'll be doing adults and some of the things um, in other sessions. So ready, set, go. <laughs> Does someone have a brilliant program that they've been doing or a question about a program? I'm just going to jump in. We've been doing um, Animal Crossing. It's been really popular and fun um, for that age group. So we um, we have a library switch that we created um, a library island on. Um, and we have um, sessions for uh, teens to come join our island. And they do activities and stuff, fishing contests, um, things like that uh and take some items home with them um so that's been really fun and popular um and we're looking at doing um continuing with that in the summer and also adding in among us um as another video game thing now are they coming to the building for this or do you just have like a, a server that you share out yeah so we um they email out the um the code um, five minutes before the program so that the, the teens can come join in. And for Among Us, it'll be set up in, um, in a Zoom meeting, and then we'll just share the code in the Zoom meeting. Anyone have any questions for Alex about the video game programming? We're doing something similar and want to share. I'm also keeping an eye out on the chat. So if somebody doesn't have a microphone or they're, you know, sitting at the circulation desk and can't talk. This is uh, Amy Nicole with the Lee County Library System. And for our teen program, um, you know, I, was, I mentioned this the other day, like we are um, 
we kind of realized that the teens that do the summer reading program, we do get high school teens, but the majority are middle school teens um, or preteens. So um, we, we don't have Animal Crossing or Among Us, but we do have Kahoot. So we're gonna um, develop some trivia contests. And we also, um, we had a virtual Phantom Fest last year and we discovered uh, using Google Forms for virtual escape rooms. So we're gonna create some of those um, to go along with other Read Squared missions. Um, we are offering a printed, um, a printed program as well as a Read Squared program. So um, the, the printable will be a sheet with like kind of a bucket list of things to do over the summer and then a tear off at the bottom that they can return um, by the end of the summer. Um, Read Squared uh, will have the missions where they can log and do everything online. And um, we're doing it this way just um, for, um, you know, to have an equal program that's accessible to all of our kids. Um, we are also, um, separate from summer reading, we're offering, um, it's, an, it's called SOS, Summer of Service Program. And this is really targeting high school teens. We're gonna be working with other county departments and close um, county agencies and friends to offer um, uh, teens volunteer opportunities so they can get volunteer hours by attending virtual programs um, and completing um, activities and projects at home. So it might be something like uh, creating a poster for like spay and neuter or, you know, picking up um, some materials at the library and then creating a placemat for Meals on Wheels. Um, mean, in the meantime, they're, they're learning about hunger or stray animal populations or animal abuse. Um, so we're raising awareness um, promoting a more civic-minded community and getting uh, the teens involved. And they get hours. Yay! <laughs> I know that that in our children's programming, this became a really popular topic the other day. Um, so yes, I know that that's a question that I feel like has been coming up since last year when everything started going virtual is how how can libraries still help teens hit those those service hours without being able to physically come into the building and the, we've got a lot of chatter in the chat clearly my my language is very diverse this morning um kendall did ask a good question going back to the video game programming um, does that have a strict age group? How do you make sure the teens are the ones doing the programming, uh, doing the program? Um, and Alex did respond saying that they can't ensure that. They just make it clear in the event listing and hope that the right people sign up. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has a way that you're, you've sort of been vetting um, some of these virtual programmings that are meant for teens. Has anyone else been, been doing that? Or is it kind of the same as Alex? You just kind of hope that the right age group is showing up. Hi, this is Megan from the North Palm Beach Library. Can you hear me? Perfect. Um, what we're doing is very similar. We are offering a teen book club right now. Our first one is going to be at the end of the month. We haven't exactly started it yet. We have gone some interest, but um, one way to make sure we're filtering that it's like teens that are exactly signing up. Um, I'm having, I'm making sure that I confirm like their age, that they fall into our age range. Um, so because it's teen books, we're going to go more between the age 13 to 17 age range and they have to sign up with parent permission. We have an online form that we make. Uh, that we made for them to use. So it's convenient for them to just sign up at home rather than calling or coming to the library. They can still do those two, but we've been trying to like filter out through that way by making sure like they check that box saying, yes, I'm the parent, they have permission to tune into this meeting kind of deal. And they read the book and they get 10 community service hours. So we're kind of looking to do that as a once a month program. Um, as far as other programs for like, when it comes to the summer where I'm, uh, we're in our teens are basically like in really heavy demand for like those community service hours like i'm sure we've all said so i'm trying to get creative with them and um, i'm trying to plan for a beach cleanup day 
where it's like a free for all, like any of our patrons can come over, but if teens come over, they can get those community service hours. I'm also trying to do the same with our local park. And um, I'm also arranging with some of my, um, trying to manage with some of my uh, part-time staff that um, some of um, these teens that come to the library, um, what they can do is they can arrange like very passive things that uh, patrons can interact with. Like um, I know in the uh, handbook, there was one where it was um, animal trivia and um, pa patrons can lift like the flap and look at like th these uh, facts or information about these animals kind of deal. So that's like an assignment that we can have for our teen volunteers. And that's just the direction that we're trying to go, just bit, like trying to get creative and make the volunteering like more fun and interactive for them. Um, and there was some some chat about you know grab and go or take home kits, whichever whichever verbiage you're using for the pick them up at the library and take them home. Um, and I know that I just see a lot of conversation just on Facebook groups where people just feel like they're sort of running dry of ideas on, you know, activities to put in a bag, especially for the preteens and the teens. Um, and so if you have, again, especially related to summer reading theme, any, any brilliant ideas, that is one of the tabs on the, um, the spreadsheet, the Google Docs spreadsheet as well. Um, I know if you're anything like me, I just get to a point where my, my creativity runs dry <laughs> and I need fresh, fresh ideas. Alex, I saw you um, put your hand up. Yeah, um, so this was like accidentally related to the theme, but then I realized it went and so we're going to continue with it in the summer. Um, <laughs> we've been doing these uh, tween and teen embroidery kits um, with felt um, and sewing. Um, they've been these cute little animals. I wonder if um, my coworker still has one of them over here. I'm not sure. Um, but there are these little um, patterns um, with all the materials, the embroidery thread and everything, um, needles um, that we send out. And they can either come up at the library or we can put with a media specialist to send kits to the library. And they pick them up there. Um, and then there's um, a corresponding video that I dropped um, in a Google Drive folder for them to watch, since this isn't one that goes out um, on our, our Facebook page. We've also been using our Cricut um, to cut out patterns and stuff. This is from, made from uh, recycled cereal boxes. Um, and it's a fairy house. Um, so a little bit more involved than some of the kids crafts um, and our, our teens and tweens have really been enjoying those too. Um, I saw someone asking about in person programs. And we're doing one. Um, we're doing a Pokemon um, uh, like catch them all sort of thing. My one of my coworkers um, made these large um, like silhouettes of Pokemon. Um, and we're going to mount them and put them outside our branch um, so that the kids can go around with a corresponding like printout um, Pokedex and they can guess like, who's that Pokemon? Um, so we'll have that available at um, certain times every week and change out the characters um, over the course of the summer. Hey guys, this is Kate from Columbia County. Sorry if I interrupted anybody. Alex, kind of going off what you said, I really liked your embroidery kit ideas. And just a heads up, if any of your libraries have Creative Bug, there is a tutorial in Creative Bug already about how to make, it's for ornaments, but it's the same thing. It's like the two pieces of felt and you like do a blanket stitch all around it. And Creative Bug has the complete supply lists and an instructional video. So if you don't feel super comfortable making that on your own, they have that in there. So just FYI, but good idea, I like it. Creative Bug or Creative Book? It's called Creative Bug, like B-U-G. And it's a database that a lot of libraries have. I know that we have it. So if you, that is a resource you do have that's available to you. Great information to eventually end up in our Google Docs. And I'm scrolling through the chat. Um, and I did want to piggyback to, um, which Alex mentioned it, that someone did ask if other libraries are starting to do any kind of in-person 
programming or looking at it for this summer. Hey everybody, can you hear me? I'm Sally Mason, I'm at the Leon County Public Library in Tallahassee, Florida. And I was gonna say, we're not gonna be doing in-person programming. Um, and in the summer I'm looking to do, we've been doing a lot of virtual programs with teens and it's been pretty good attendance, but I think in the summer we're gonna kind of do a mix of virtual and craft bags and stuff. And one of the ones we're gonna do is like these little geometric um, shrinky dink keychains. Um, and I found all these animal patterns. I have that one and a little fox one on um, Canva, so it's completely free. And then you just print them on the Shrinky Dink through your printer um, and then cut them out and that will be one of our activity bags. So I'll throw that in the, um, the programming thing. But I wanted to share that. I think, yeah, we're just not gonna be ready for in-person at that point, at least here. So um, we're tending to stay away from it, but um, we'll see what happens hopefully in the next few months. <laughs> I know my teams are definitely virtual out, so. Um, it's very hard. Yeah, well, and here in Leon County, too, we're still, um, we have a countywide mask mandate as well that I think is still impacting a lot of indoor activities. Definitely. Um, and Alex says, the most cost effective way to buy shrinking materials. Um, I think I bought like a pack of 50 from Amazon, and it was about $20, $21, I think. Um, and I could get probably four of these animals on a sheet um, that were big enough. So it's not too bad. Uh, and then I'm actually doing one for a Harry Potter bag that we're doing and I made like little ties um, that they could color in and make their own Harry Potter tie. Um, and I think I got like 12 of them on a sheet. So that was really like effective. Um, I think you just have to make sure your printer will print correctly <laughs> so that it prints the right way. Um, but it seems okay. And then I think I got like a hundred keychains for like $6. So again like not too bad if you're not and I, I don't think our teen bags are as big as like our younger age bags we do a lot more of those than we do teen bags so yeah um, and kelly from Bruton said that they're in the something in the works is adulting skills for teens and young adults so topics such as cooking organizing financing etc um so yeah, I think we'd love more information on what your approach to that is. Are you doing it in video or? Um... I heard a microphone unmute. I can talk about ours for a little bit while they're getting unmuted. Our adulting ones have been really popular. Um, we've done cooking, finance. Um, we just did, yesterday was a little bit of a lower turnout. I just did one on growth, how, cultivating a growth mindset, which was actually fabulous, but um, we didn't have a lot of attendance for that one. I think because the wording is really like obscure. Um, and then we're gonna do, um, oh, what's the next one? We're doing, um, oh, I'm forgetting. Um, Tallahassee Police Department's coming in and they're gonna do one on self-defense, which will be really cool. Um, we're doing one um, for our celebration of autism and neurodiversity, um, and that's going to be about gaining independence on the spectrum. And then we have one other one that I'm forgetting right now, but ours has been really popular for a Zoom program for teens. Hi, this is Kelly. This is on who made that post. Uh, I think I could do um, book displays. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did like a little, just like a printed uh, sheet of like journaling ideas and, and prompts and such. So I was thinking something along those lines, just uh, look for resources to bring to our teens and young adults that may be able to help them so they know where to start and not feel uh, uncertain as they are embarking on their own adventures and all and becoming more independent. So, um, but I wanted to, it was, it's for coming months, but I wanted to see what we have for resources on our website and in our library itself. For books and all. Can you guys hear me? Okay, um, Sally and I, um, Sally who was just speaking a minute ago, <clears throat> and I are also working on um, a program this summer for teens that's um, Social IQ, and it's going to be like a six-week program, and it's kind of like manners, but it's to help them 
ultimately to help them um, do well in a job in the workforce and to bridge that gap between like our current um, uh, or well like the the current generation of teens social IQ and bridge it to the the people that are already in the workforce which have a completely different perspective and expectation so that they can hopefully be more successful um, with you know their their careers. Okay. We're working in something here for Hardy. You can see it. <laughs> You're like, what? It's okay. I love how we all just got like in, in total like toddler taking a selfie mode. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a piece of cardboard. We're actually gonna work on it in a on a smaller scale. And what you do is you have yarn. And you kind of poke it through these holes. Can you see the holes? And tie it off. And it creates the hair. So, you know, your kid can play hairdresser on this and not you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can draw their face and make, you know, I did green eyes and red lips after Danny. <laughs> and it's just, it's something really fun and cool that they can get creative with and kind of like, you know. And then if they do want to, Play hair dress up or whichever. It's just something fun. Very cool. And then you could also always tie it back to the theme by instead of doing like a person, you could do a hairy animal. Like, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> like a horse mane, you know. <laughs> yeah. On the top. Yeah, for some reason, my brain went to rooster yeah. and I was like, no, that, no. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a horse or like you could do it short and make like a fuzzy fox face or a lion or something cool yeah. like that. Yeah. That's it was really fun doing it. Not connected to my brain cells yet today. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Thank you. Risa also said scavenger hunts are fun for teens and can be adapted to parks or downtown areas. You could uh, consider a pickup or printout checklist and a prize pickup at your library so you can get stats. Um, we did get a question. Um, folks are looking for good virtual presenters. Um, so if you have any ideas, I know page turners is very popular for the, the younger crowd. Um, but yeah, if you have any any good virtual presenter performers for this age group, Please share. And there is also a spot for that um, in the Google Doc too. So, you know, as you're looking ahead. Darla said, Sarasota, Sarasota County um, is doing outdoor story times and her library is doing outdoor movies once a month. So Darla, can you share a little bit about what your pet setup is for that and how you all are, are organizing that? Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so the outdoor story time is at another library, but what I've been told is, is that um, they the patrons who come for it are doing a pretty good job of following the guidelines of six feet apart. And it's been very popular. Um, they have a wait list for it every single time. So they are trying to limit how many people come also. And for our outdoor story time, our library ordered um, a screen, you know, that's like inflatable and got a projector. And we have a popcorn machine. So we've been offering popcorn and the friends of the library have been selling candy as a fundraiser for the friends because the bookstores are closed here. So. Heather also said that they are also doing outdoor movies once a month. Um, very small numbers and pre-registration required. Heather, is that pre-registration for the movie or is it for uh, the story and baby times that you're starting? And I don't know if you have a mic or not. Um, 
Megan also posed some questions for those doing outdoor story times. And I think the question would also apply for outdoor movies or any sort of that outside the building, but in person. Um, how are you making sure your patrons are social distancing? Are they doing it themselves? How many would you say are wearing masks? Alex, um, someone would mind sharing the link for the inflatable screen in the Google Doc. And Jessica says she has a quick tip for adulting skills too. So let her know when she can chime in. Jessica, that's me. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, so a couple of different things I can actually, we've been incorporating some in-person um, programs outdoors. Um, as far as keeping everyone distanced, um, I'm doing like, I had a, my monthly science activity yesterday, so they just sign up per family. So I had five families and I just set up five different tables in our courtyard spread apart. So families have been pretty good about just keeping distanced from each other. I think they're just super grateful to have something in person that they can attend. Um, so, so far it's gone pretty well. Um, my tip for adulting back in the before times, we used to do a lot of um, adulting classes for teens. And after a couple of years, I was starting to run out of monthly ideas and I had already rotated some. So I actually in May one year reached out to, um, I'm in Pasco, to Pasco County Emergency Management. And they came and did a special like disaster training for teens. Um, and preparation of hurricane season, which sounds like not something you would necessarily need to do for teens, but the amount of teens who don't know their phone numbers, if cell phones die, um, we have a ton of teens in our neighborhood and local community who are really act as parent because mom's working two jobs and dad's in jail or whatever it is. So there's a lot of teens that would be the older kind of parental figure that would be helping kind of take care of prepping hurricane stuff and just making sure they have supplies. So it was a pretty, it was more successful than I thought it would be. So if anyone um, is, you know, running low on creativity for ideas for that sort of class, that worked out pretty well, um, especially because everyone in Florida, obviously that affects us every year on some level. So that's what I got. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great, especially living in Florida. So I am curious because, um, you know, thinking about the summer reading theme, animals and stories and tales and tales, um, are you all focusing on the theme for your preteens and teens or are you just sort of moving on with life? Because I, I feel like, you know, when I was looking at this theme and looking at the things, I was like, and I think I even said it to, to my supervisor, Dolly, who's in the room helping me run, run chat and, and software, that this seems like a theme that really lends itself a lot easier to the younger crowd, but seems a lot harder to really plan age appropriate things out for say the preteens and the teens and the adults. So I'm curious, I'm seeing nods and heads shaking. So unmute, let's, let's chat, let's talk. Hey, this is Kate again. Um, I know in the past we might have had like the first one or two maybe teen activities that kind of coincide with the theme, but after that it's just like literally whatever they think was cool and we get them here. It doesn't have to match the theme or not. Usually involving food. <laughs> Hi there, this is um, Tanisha from Hillsborough County Public Library. Let me turn my camera on so y'all can actually see me. Um, so for this theme, um, we are not doing it too hard for the t tweens and teens. We're also focusing on that tale, like the tales, like the storytelling part for our teens and adults, because as you said, it's, it really does lend itself, um, for younger kids. And something else we've noticed with our, and we're doing all virtual through the end of the summer, so we're not offering anything in person. Um, another thing that we noticed 
was that our um, coding and our STEAM and STEM programs are very popular with our tweens, not so much with our teens. Um, and we are offering some teen programs during the summer, like we're having our YA, our YA teen book club and we are gonna do a smattering of things, but we also have a Teen Lit Fest in October. That is our really big like teen push. But we did notice with like our tweens, the 10 to 12, our STEM and STEAM programs. I did a Scratch series last summer um, and it went really, really well. And Scratch translates very well to virtual programming. It's something that's very easy for them to do. We post it to our YouTube channel after. So if they wanna go back and do the, the, the project, it's really good. But um, I did want to say, I did notice that our STEM stuff does really well with the tweens. And, um, yeah, I love the focus on the, the T-A-I-L-S or the T-A-L-E-S. Oh. <laughs> I need stronger caffeine in my life but the storytelling aspect, especially right now, because they are living through such a monumental point in history. And I don't know how many of our, our kids and teens realize that they are currently living through a point in time that their kids are going to learn about when they are their age. And so being able to provide them with an opportunity to sort of collect that so that they have it, um, you know, to remember because those details get lost over time. Um, Jessica said that uh, one thing she's played around with is reaching out to a local animal shelter to see if they could partner for an adoption event, uh, working in the tails and tails, and it helps the local organizations um, because pet adoptions have increased so much in the last few months. Um, yeah, which is great. It kind of makes me think of some of these animal shelters that have done things like dressed up their dogs as famous people. And then that's the picture they put out is the, the please adopt me. Um, Dolly did ask, do y'all have local groups that rehabilitate wildlife? Um, I know we do up here in Leon County. We have St. Francis which recently went viral because of their video of them giving a beaver a bath, which is the cutest thing ever after he was rescued. Um, yeah, there's one in Lee County and they usually have them visit with a pet ambassador. They've been offering virtual programs and Teresa shared the St. Francis. That's and what's been... Oh, I was saying, I'm reading, but if you have a mic, please feel free to not have to listen to me <laughs> what's been difficult is like usually like the local organizations that we use um like crow and sanibel seed school and those places they've all been offering their own virtual programs throughout the year so it's sort of like what can we offer that's unique um and that they can't access anywhere else um, without paying. And that's really difficult because you go on TikTok and YouTube. I mean, my eight-year-old does drawing videos on TikTok or she sees them and she follows along. So um, so that's what's been tricky is just trying to find something unique enough that they can't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Kendall. I'm from uh, Clay County and we started actually doing in-person programming be in, back in September, um, which has been interesting to say the least. Um, we decided as of two days ago, I guess technically, that we weren't going to continue doing in-person for summer, that we're just doing virtual and make and takes and kind of doing like a hybrid, but no in-person programming. Um, for teens, it was really kind of a complicated thing. Like we could only have eight in a room. Um, and we uh, had safety protocols and everything was pre-registered and it just kind of became a problem. But before we had switched to the hybrid kind of style we're going to use, we had looked into using our animal services here in Clay County to have an adoption event as well. Um, everyone was on board, but we've kind of switched gears now. Um, but that was something that we were looking at too and is trying to subtly hit the theme 
because the other issue is too with Clay County, our teen department is relatively new. So whenever we advertise, no matter how in big bold letters we put teen or 13 to 17 or whatever, we always get littles that show. Um, so that's kind of been a real struggle for us in the past. And it's something that we've decided to not work with the theme as well, um, just because it is kind of young and it's hard to to make it as teen as possible. So that's kind of where we are right now. Hi, this is Darla from Sarasota County. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, and uh, kind of jumping back to the TikTok thing, um, we have started something that we kind of call Lip Talk, but um, there's a program I do called Almost One Minute Book Reviews where I review new teen books that have come into the library and we try to keep it, I call it Almost One Minute because I try to keep it as close to a minute as possible because that's a maximum length you can make a TikTok. So I'm trying to make sure that I can capture interest by keeping it short. And there's been some uh, questions about volunteer teen hours. We also do a program called Book Tastings um, when we do a theme each month. Um, next month is gonna be powerful female heroines, for example. One of the librarians I work with, there's three of us that do it, sends out a list of suggested books so they don't have to try to find a book themselves and then they have them record their review of the book um, we give them guidelines for what we're looking for in the review and we also try to keep those at one minute as much as possible and we have about uh six to nine teens who will do that so we try to keep it at 10 minutes or under because we have followed the analytics for our videos and found that after about five or six minutes, viewers drop off um, in droves. So we've tried to learn to keep the videos a little shorter. And we're also going to try to start doing some Vimo, uh, videos that mimic um, trends in TikTok, like Book Talk. There's certain trends they do um, to try to get interest from teens. So. So I guess anyway, what I'm saying is when they do the book tastings, for example, they can get volunteer hours for that. I was gonna share at least the one thing that I think has helped with our team numbers and like actually getting that teen attendance with our teen advisory board. Um, once we really got that going, we offer teen hours and we've been able to continue it through this by offering virtual hours for them to come into Zoom and we have meetings and they still help plan all our programs and stuff. Um, they don't do as much hands-on because they can't come into the building and do it, but they still generate ideas. Um, but once we had our teen advisory board and they were earning hours for that, then we don't get as many younger kids coming to those programs because um, the teens come. But I know we struggled with that a lot and it was really hard um, when you had eight-year-olds coming and then the teens don't want to come to something where an eight-year-old's at. So definitely a really hard struggle. And I think I went through like a, a time where I was like, that's it. No more little kids. <laughs> Even though I know as librarians, like we hate telling people like, no. Um, but it was it was really hard. Yeah, but it's also important to have boundaries too, because if you're trying to create a safe space for teens, you know, they're not really going to feel like they can just be themselves if there's, you know, I mean, my eight year old struggles with that with my four year old, and they're closer in age than, say, you know, a 16 year old and a five year old. Um, Definitely. And we had to kind of, you know, we had a lot of parents asking, well, well, my kid's 10 and they're really, you know, mature. And it's like, okay, but. You know, they're going to come in and they're, talk they're talking to a 15 year old and a 15 year old is talking about totally different things like, you know, you might not want that. <laughs> so it it's gotten better, but that I think our team advisory board really helped. Um, Hardy said that they are going to different locations and filming segment videos to go with the theme of the week. So example, they're having a farm week and they're going to go film cattle and chickens. Um, or having a jungle week and they're going to go film at a local animal refuge. 
You don't want to hop a, a plane and just go to the jungle. <laughs> We'd like to go to the jungle. The jungle would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tropical jungle. <laughs> the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, just even you know, we need to go to the beach to get because we're in Florida. We have a lot of sea creatures. Yes. We are doing an ocean week too, so that that beach trip, yeah, yep. library field trip. <laughs> um, and and Darla did get a question in the chat um, that she answered, saying that um, when she talked about the the TikTok, they are emulating TikTok because they aren't allowed to actually have a TikTok, so they're trying to sort of capture that feel without actually using TikTok. Chris says she likes the idea of remote filming, which Wakali County did that for some of their story times last year. And I know that my kids got a kick out of it. They just happened to be here as I was vetting videos to share out on our bureau Facebook page, um, which also I'm going to plug it right now. We love to share your content on our page. Um, so if you're as you're doing some of these programs or if you're putting out videos and things like that please feel free to tag us in it or email me a link to it so we can share what you're doing across the state um oh what video editing software are people using and the chat is filling up with resources does somebody have does someone want to talk about their video editing software or what they're using especially if you were not maybe particularly skilled in this this time last year but had to develop that skill in the last year so our library got some macbooks um, as part of the cares act funding um, and we all got trained on using imovie and if you haven't if you're if you're already familiar with canva with making like flyers and stuff in canva they last year added a lot of video stuff and it oh it just makes a huge difference in the quality um, of the videos that we're putting up um, on our website and on our youtube page so highly highly recommend canva and it's very um very user friendly i think anyway Um, I do know that iMovie, we use in um, Hillsborough County, we use Premiere Pro because we have a separate team that does any of our video production. But I do know at the beginning, um, before we were able to like scramble together and get it going, that um, we did use iMovie and it does have a very low barrier to entry and you are able to put together some like really awesome videos if you are able to get a Mac and if you have a Mac that um, iMovie comes with it for free. Um, so something to consider if you're looking at putting together some good quality videos. Yeah, in Clay County, we just got the Adobe software. So Premiere Pro was what we were using. Um, we had zero experience using it. And basically I just YouTube tutorial and figured out what I needed to do to get it to work. Um, so I am, I know very little, but what I do know I've used a lot. So it's been great. Um, but even like if you have access to that and you've never used it before, YouTube is, YouTube is where it's at when you're just like, how do I just edit this and little things like that. And that's what we did. Um, and there's a question in the chat from Christine. Can the librarians who shared Tuesday tell us more about the Teen Service Hours program where they make posters and kits for those who are homeless? Um, hi, Christine. That was me, Amy, at Lee County Library System. Um, so what we're going to be doing, and we actually flushed this out a little bit more this morning, um, we're going to be working with local, um, with county agencies and close community partners. So um, the Lee County Human Services, they work with the homeless population. Um, we have the community cooperative um, that has the soup kitchens and Meals on Wheels, um, Lee Animal Services. So those types of agencies. And what they're going to do is um, we're going to host them on um, our go-to meeting platform. Teens will watch the, the, the discussion or be a part of the discussion. They'll learn a little bit about an issue that's facing the community or a challenge and how they can help and kind of brainstorm other ideas of how they can help. 
they can come into the library and pick up a kit um, or this might be something that they can also complete at home without coming into the library and picking up a kit um, an activity based on it so if it's for like animal services it could be anything from making a cat toy i mean we haven't decided on the activities it could be make a make a cat toy um, or create a poster about the importance of spay and neuter if it's um, a, a kit for the homeless um, we've worked with them before for our kindness club and they provide a list of things that they like to see in these kits um, so they can collect um, items that they have um, for and make their own kits or we can try to figure out a way to collect items from the community um, so that they can um, they can create a kit. So there are a lot of different uh, opportunities, but basically the kid, the teens would have to sign up. This is the SOS program, the Summer of Service program. They would have to sign up and register at the beginning of the summer. Um, they would get a card that's kind of pre-filled with hours. So they would get um, two hours where they, um, one hour for attending the program and another hour for completing the activity. And they would get like a stamp or a staff sign off um, when they bring the item into the library and put it into the collection box. So we're trying to also make this, while other folks are opening up and offering programs, we're still like looking at as much like contact free um, as we can get. So uh, there would be collection boxes and they would get um, staff sign off. By having them register and by taking attendance during the program, we do have like a written document or some sort of um, accountability for those hours, um, guidance counselors have a little bit of flexibility on how they can sign off on hours. It would be up to the teens to make sure that this would um, fulfill any service obligations. Um, we're not gonna participate in that, but that at the end of the summer, we'll sign off on it. Um, and and that's, about, that's about it for now, but we figure we'll have six weeks of that so they can get 12 hours um, at least, um, perhaps some more. Um, so this is a start for us. And there's a comment in the chat. Megan makes have been great at keeping people coming in, but without in-person programming. And then Darla shared a video. The top video for Black History Month is the first video in which we had teams participate and do the video. And that one goes in there. Very cool. Um, is anybody doing like a reading log or reading challenge, reading fill in the blank um, portion for your teams? Yeah, we're using Read Squared um, or on the print portion if they choose to do the print program. Um, there will be a reading log, but it's all it's all honor system. Um, you know, they just they just check off that they've read at least 15 minutes um, a day. We might we might actually bump that up for the teens. Um, they earn points, and then the points put them into you know they they're automatically entered to win prizes. Yeah, there's a couple of folks in the Dean Stack and Read Squared. I think have become very common vernacular over the last year. I know some libraries were using it before, um, but there's been a big jump on that. Um, and in case you hadn't heard, if you are, you know, even if you're not focusing so much on the theme, but if you're still using the artwork for C from CSLP, they did recently release badges and artwork specifically for Beanstack and Read Squared. Um, so they've got like the levels and all that stuff on the, the summer reading artwork if you were interested in that. And so you all are doing timed. Um, anybody want to share? Are you doing timed? Are you doing challenges? I know some people do activity challenges as opposed to, you know, or number of books. Um, and we have a comment. We had card last year. We had cards that we mark off and enter in a drawing for every five books. We're doing, um, we, 
so I'm a city library that's in another that's not part of our county system. So I kind of always go a little rogue off theme anyway. So while we're borrowing a lot from Tales and Tales, our actual theme is called Get Local. Um, and where not only do we have COVID restrictions, our library is going under a renovation, which is now looking like it's going to start in May. So I will be displaced for the entire summer. So that's been another fun wrench in the plan. So I am look like we're going to have reading, um, just logging. I always focus on doing more like creating a daily habit of reading versus reading a certain amount of hours. Um, so we're going to have that partnered with activity badges, like visiting a local park. Um, I'm trying to partner a lot with local businesses to help them out too. Um, so I'm basically planning my entire summer as being offsite in various places, which has been super fun. Um, but yeah, ours will be a combination of both. This will be our first summer using Beanstack. We got it last summer, but didn't implement it yet. Um, until the fall. So this will be a new experience for everybody for summer, at least. So if you have tips and tricks, send them just his way. <laughs> uh, we did get a question, prize ideas for teens. Uh, last year, our grand prize was Oculus VR, branch prize baskets included books, a Sphero mini and sketchbook pencils, looking for some new ideas. the cause <laughs> hey guys um i would love to give out an oculus that would be great <laughs> but we're from a really tiny library system um we don't have a lot of money but in the past what's been really awesome with our teens is i literally go to five below and I pick like a theme for like a little gift basket and I fill it with crap from Five Below and they lose their minds over that stuff. Like the Squishmallows and cool stickers. And um, if you go to the candy section, they have like gummy pizzas and gummy tacos and weird crap like that. So like, um, I usually set like a $30 like spending limit and then just fill it full of weird stuff and they really love it. Here, the better. That's what I said gift Wait. cards, gift cards, and gift cards. It's the most responsive. Um, GoPros. Yeah, so no. for Hillsborough County, that was one of our big prizes. So we did a weekly book giveaway last year. We used Beanstack. We did a um, weekly book giveaway that was also pretty popular and we made sure to include some YA titles and um, they were, the kids were pretty happy with them. And then at the beginning of the summer for sign up, we had a big giveaway. Midway through we had a big, and when I say big, like a high ticket item giveaway and at the end of the summer. So we gave away GoPros, iPads, um, for the littles, we gave away, I'm trying to remember what, we gave away some type of STEM kit, and I'm, I'm sorry, my mind is blank, blanking on what we gave away. Um, it might have been a Lego set, I'm not sure, but we gave away that, and that tended to be really popular, and it increased um, sign up as well, as far as getting people to sign up to use Beanstack. Yeah, and the good thing about GoPro is the, the actual on-brand GoPro can get pricey but there's so many like knockoff brands that so if you are working on a budget and especially because so many people are spending a lot more time outside these days um that it's kind of you know it's kind of like a tablet right you can go with a thousand dollar apple whatever or you can find a, a forty dollar kindle so there's lots of in between um and Camila said we started giving away YA books to teens who participated in the summer reading program, and it went pretty well last year. Um, we gave out Steve Spengler science test tube experiments and prize baskets last year. Um, Morgan said they're giving away the karaoke mics that are big on TikTok. Very cool. All this needs to end up in that Google Doc. Also, we are going to save the chat. 
um, because there's so much great information in there. So whenever I send a follow-up email, you will also have the chat. <laughs> Um, Sally said we gave away a Kodak Instaprint camera with a phone photography program we did in the fall. Um, also gift cards. Darla said the little mics on TikTok. Very cool. So we are down to three minutes. Um, this has been great. This has been fantastic. I know it is not the same as being in person. Um, you know, in a room with, with Sally leading you or Alex leading you or one of our other amazing presenters. Um, but I'm glad we could pull everybody together um, and at least talk and share ideas. Y'all are much more smart, you know, y'all are much more brilliant at this than I am. So, um, so I'm glad that we could all get together. Um, I do want to pop over, I'm gonna screen share again really quickly, um, just for anybody who hasn't popped over to that Google Doc yet, um, sure I hit the right button. Um, although it looks like it has been a very busy document. Um, and so there's a tab just to kind of help break, break out some of this information. And at some point when I'm done with all these, I will go back and clean all of these up. Um, so we have a tab here for just general programming ideas. If you have a snazzy program name, um what type of you know what type of a program it is if it's prepping or steam or virtual um any links so if you're using um specific equipment and you want to share the link where you got it from or if it's a craft where you know it leads back to an instruction blog something of that nature um if the activity is in the cslp manual it sounds like most of these maybe aren't and that's okay um, but if they are, then it's helpful, you know, that, that folks know that they can refer back to that manual. And then if you are okay with your colleagues reaching out to you um, for more questions, if they want to talk a little bit more about how you approach something, there's a there's information for that. If you just want to throw your name and an email address or a phone number where they can reach you. Um, here's one for grab and goes or take and make. So you can put in sort of what the idea is, a quick description, what you put in it. If you have a cost breakdown, um, you know, I'm sure that's helpful too. Paid or not, not paid presenters, but any kind of presenter that's doing virtual um, programming that you highly recommend. I put in a rating type just because I know that sometimes knowing maybe who not to use can be also just as valuable as who to use. Um, don't feel obligated to fill that in if you don't want to. Um, but again, type of performance, kind of what they do, are they virtual? Um, and then there's one for prize ideas um, that you can just throw anything in there to help. Um, and I will send this link out too. So if you don't, you know, it's not one of those things where if you don't enter stuff in it right now, you never get another chance. My hope is that this will continue to grow over the next several months. Um, but I will email all these recordings out. They're also on our YouTube channel. Um, so if for some reason one doesn't come through to you, um, our YouTube channel is where they, they live and breathe. Um, but with that, it's 12 o'clock. So thank you, everybody. I hope you go enjoy lunch. Go eat some food, stay dry if it's rainy where you are like it is here. Yes, you can share that Google Doc out. Please do.